Hello everyone, we're back, another episode of the Crazy Face Uno Podcast. I've, uh, as always, Mr. Chancy Poo is in the studio with us, and our guest today, the man, Eric <laughs> Richardson. What's up man, good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome. Glad you're here, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate you having me on. Yeah. So, Eric, I'm going to give you a little, just a rundown. So, Eric is, um, he's a teacher. He works at the school that I work at currently, yep. still. You we'll worked in my room that. for a year. Yeah, I worked in your room for a year. So, works in special education. Uh, you're a big movie buff. Yes. You are <laughs> a big... Minnesota sports fan. I am. Indeed. You, Sporting on my gear today. Yep. Get your twins gear going. All right. Twins are on a hot streak right now. Yeah, Can't I, believe it. Yeah. it's uh, It's been a long time since I can be expi- excited about my favorite team. I know. And if you get me talking about the twins, I probably won't stop. <laughs> <laughs> You're a musician. You're a, mm-hmm. a drumline coach. Is that what you call it? Or uh, I think it's drumline instructor. I think instructor. it's kind of technically kind of the term. But it's it's the same as coaching. It's... You know, extracurricular coaching kind of like yeah. things like that. I was looking on social media, your <laughs> stuff, and it looks like you're uh, you like to travel. You've done more traveling than I think I know. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll, we'll, we should get into that eventually. We, we definitely talk about that. Let's Are you one of four kids? Yes. So you have a sister. That's I've, the one I haven't met. Yeah, I have an older sister. Okay. Um, that's the one you haven't met. You've met my twin brother. I was. I started to write it down that you were one of three, and I was like, "Wait a second! I know he has a sister because <laughs> she just had a baby, correct?" Yep, yep. I that, I got the pleasure of being asked to be godfather to little. Uh, uh-huh. Her name is Lenora. We call her little Lenny, and she's a beautiful little, little girl. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. It is. Well, congratulations on being the godfather to if, if, little for her, Lenny. 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 Yeah. That's I cute. think for her it was an easy choice. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> Duh. Yeah. No kidding. So for everybody out there, we are currently, so this is a very interesting setup I've got going on here, but uh, we're recording this as well, video recording um, this podcast, and I'm going to upload that onto YouTube as well. Um, I have a bunch of equipment, so like camera equipment and uh, adapting things for... <laughs> Is that the technical term? <laughs> yeah, that's the real technical <laughs> term, let me tell you. Uh, for my phone. So it'll have a stand, got some different lenses, so I can get some different angle, different wide angle lenses, whatever. Um, yeah, lighting. Uh, I got a mic for for the phone. I've, it's, it's, I've invested into that now. So you're going to have the pleasure to listen via your podcasting streams eric pointed out to me i i had said that it was on spotify which it will be uh hopefully they can move that process along a little bit (laughs) i I thought it had been already up no i checked again this morning yeah i did too it still wasn't up there so it's slowly we're on all the other ones there's a bunch of them that are apparently pretty popular but Mm -hmm. i've never heard of them so but i'm on those too and then we've got uh yeah we run some of the the other you know, popular one. So hopefully Spotify will get that things released and put that up there soon. Hopefully. But it'd be good to see you on there. Yeah. I find you on SoundCloud pretty easily. So yeah. And that's what my website runs through. Yeah. Um, and then everything else kind of pulls from Podbean, which is my hosting platform that I use. And then they, that's what we're recording on right now. Never even heard of Podbean. I know. uh, I had not either, but that was one of the, the recommended top, like, yeah, it seems Whatever like you've done a, a ton of research into like just every single facet of what it is that you're trying to do, and like the the media platform aspect yeah. seems like the most daunting one to me. I don't know. Yeah, it it is. Um, I mean, all of it, it, it. Just at the moment, it's just interesting. You know, you hear people talk about like a startup, and I wouldn't necessarily go as far as to say this is a startup. But there's elements to that, probably for sure. Yeah. Um, and people wearing all the hats and I, you know, you don't really think about it until you like get into it and you're like, oh yeah, I'm doing yeah. the podcast. I'm 
everything if I ship a mug. Like, I have to figure out all those shipping things. So, Mm -hmm. you know, it was one of those things where I know I knew that the website that I have has programs for shipping and everything. So when people would buy a mug, thanks, Eric, you bought a mug. I did buy one. Um, But when people bought a mug, the first one that somebody bought, I was like, oh, crap, I got to figure this out, you know? So then you, like, jump into it. It's not that it wasn't a difficult thing, but it's just something that takes time to, like, right. okay, I need you to download this. You didn't know you had to do pro- it until you encountered the situation. Yeah. Oh, this is how this process works. Right. You know? Well, that's, um, that's learning any type of thing that you're going to do. I mean, we'll get into teaching, too, but that's sort of coaching. Yeah. It's, it's you know, denial and error, trial and error. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it really is sometimes. And here we go. I got to like plug Invisible Children at least once in every podcast. But one of the things we always had at Invisible Children was we build the plane as we, fl- as we fly it, you know? Like, mm-hmm. It's just you're yeah, you're just building that plane in the air. Like. Yeah. Well, especially when you n- have no experience yeah. in what, you know, what it is that you're trying to tackle. I'm not saying that you're not you know, tech savvy or, or don't know what you're doing because you, you, right. you helped I, build the startup too, didn't you? Yeah. That I you mean, worked for? Uh, no, well, no, no, no. They... They were established, but it was young. I mean, it was a right. very, like, younger company, you know? Yeah. Very smaller group of people. I mean, it wasn't a huge company, you know? Yeah. Uh, but a lot of really hardworking, smart, intelligent people. Yeah. Well, it just brings me back to complimenting you again on just, I think it's awesome that you, are, you know, you're, you're doing what you're doing. And the fact that you're Thanks. kind of tackling and wearing all those hats that you mentioned. Yeah, you know, I'm. It's, it's awesome. It's fun. It's it's like I. Well, you can see I that get, you're you're passionate about it. And you can see that I can see the energy from you. Yeah, and like, you and I know each other pretty well. You know, we got yeah, we know each other very well. And when you're when you're excited about something, you you have a different way you carry yourself, and you can definitely see that with what you're doing with yeah. everything in here. And that's Thanks. cool to see. You had asked me when we first came in here. Mm-hmm. You were just, we were just talking about you had listened to several of the podcasts and the first one. And you had brought up the comment that I had not explained yes. my name or the brand name, right. Crazy Face Uno. Because in the because I listened to it and I remember uh, Josh, who was on the podcast, him and I were heading out to do an office trivia night, and we were talking about nice. it. And he had just bought a mug, and I was about to buy a mug, and I asked him if you had explained the name. And he's like, "Oh, he talks about that in his first video." And I watched first video. You didn't address it. So yeah, I'm just, I didn't I'm just say curious. the name specifically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So let's let's just talk about that now. So when I was in college, my You're crazy. my nickname was <laughs> Crazy Face. So All the right. first week, I you know I played soccer, and uh, the first week, like our uh, preseason training, you know, like our two days and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of the English guys on the team, uh, we were like English? on the bus. We were going so yeah, he was from England, okay. and uh, he was like, "Man, you have a crazy face." <laughs> like I just made some weird face or something, and he like made this offhanded comment, and he's like, "That's what we're gonna call you, crazy face." And then he like yelled back to the bus, you know, the back of the bus or whatever, and told somebody to, "This is what we're gonna call me." And, <laughs> The rest is history. Uh, there are worse things to be called. Uh, crazy Face. Yeah, there are worse. Um, <laughs> for sure. So that's how the nickname Crazy Face came about. And then the the Uno part, or you know, or one. like Right. So, I don't know. They, you could go with like a thousand different directions with, what was with the, one that the you Uno. With? Well, so what I, what I the only reason it, that part existed, because like... When you have apps or your games that you play, right. you always have to create like a username or a screen right. name, right? And so I was just like, oh, I don't know. Like I always, I hated those questions. It was like such, it felt like such a part of you, you know? Right. So I was like, crazy face, but crazy face was always taken. <laughs> and I hate like putting yeah. numbers after it. I just yeah. personally don't like that. Well, cause you have to, yeah. So yeah. I wrote a number, Uno, one. Yeah. Right. But it's also like. You know, when it comes up, like, you were defeated by Crazy Face, you know, like, or, you know, whatever, <laughs> like, so I don't know. You could go with the different directions with oh, that. Oh, that makes sense. All but right. the inspiration, I guess, with the name or, like, one of the things that's always held me back is, like, not knowing what to call something like this. Like, this isn't, this whole project, it's always been something, like, the bits and pieces, like, I think podcasts would be fun to do, right? Right. But, like, what do I do? Like, what? how do, how does it what is it, right? Yeah. Do I want it to just be a singular solo thing? Do I want it to, um, my mm-hmm. one of my like missions in life, I guess, in some ways, has been. I just want to help people, and so like you look at my track record with different jobs and different things I've done. It's like 
They're very service related. Yeah, they're all like service in, in related. Service of others. Because like that's like just something that I want to do. It, it I think it's having purpose the why behind what you're doing and right. um like your job. I just think it it like adds another element and it makes it yeah. more than just a job. And uh so like just kind of combining those things. I've always like wanted to I don't know do something like this. I think I watch these videos online that you oh, know yeah. with some of the ones that Jack Hartman videos and like <laughs> and some of these that we see at school and I'm like, dude, like I don't know how to edit. Right. But Jack I could figure it out. Like they're not doing anything too complicated over here. Right. You know? And, but um you know, simple things like that too. Right. Well, we've talked about Jack Hartman and like I think our buddy Trevor always makes the jokes that like us as a group could do what Jack Hartman does. We have enough yeah. people that like you just have to commit music. to it. Yeah. Well, and that was one of the things I was going to talk about. Like, it's really awesome that you're doing this because how often do you see people that say, I want to do this, I want to do that? Yeah. Like, like my buddy was like, hey, let's start a podcast. I'm like, yeah, that sounds really fun. You know, yeah. like that whole, like, what if scenario, like talking about, like, winning the lottery or scratch yeah. off ticket. Everyone's always excited about what could happen, but they don't actually sit down and do it. And the fact that you're actually, like, committing yourself to it and you can see the product. That's cool, and that's yeah. exciting, especially when it has, like, the purpose that it does. I think that adds an even more Right, and that's been morphing, you know? It. Like, it's really been evolving. Like, when I first even just, I was like, okay, so here's what, the the other one little piece of component that was, like, an inspiration, uh, Mr. Beast. So mm -hmm. I, I think I've brought him up to you, and I've started telling people, because he's been an inspiration to me mm -hmm. of, like, some of the things. And I think, you know flattery you know i'm i'm not he's got this model that's very appealing to me yeah. that like is in some ways an inspiration to what what we're doing it's definitely there's a a backbone of what crazy face uno is mm -hmm. that um i i'm like grabbing a few pieces of his model right like he's got the merchandise right. that kind of fuels his thing yeah you know my entry level is mugs you know, because I can go to Goodwill and I can buy a mug for a dollar, two dollars. I can sell mm -hmm. them under the umbrella of, hey, we're doing good. We're going to use this for this. Yep. Right. And yes, like, like I've, I've, I've addressed this before, like legitimately, I think that mugs, I think it's fun and it's a great entry level. There is an element of people being like, ah, I don't need a mug, you know, like. Yeah, but it's, it's a mug. Like, right. Can you have too many mugs? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a mug. Yeah. Plus the one I bought, like I bought it for the novelty of it. It's a it's a stinking cat. I mean, it's <laughs> it a is. ridiculous. Not one of the best ones. It's I a think. ridiculous looking mug. But yeah. The, but the, what you told me when you because my shipping was great because it was hand delivered. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But one of the one of the great things that that you had mentioned when you dropped the mug off is like, and I, and I think it was kind of the reason I picked it without thinking too much about it was the novelty of it. Like, let's say someone just asks about it, and now I have a story or I have something about yeah. the mug that I can share. Right. That's not just look at this stupid cat mug. Yeah. It's not stupid. It's a great mug. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, I, and that's exactly like I, that's the kind of good. I think that people can rally behind. Definitely. It's not that they will, but they can, you can get behind mm -hmm. just donating, like giving, if I was to ask you, Hey, will you give me $12 for, so I can do something good with it? You, if I was there, I'd probably say you'd yes. probably say yes. Yeah. But but you're also a special individual that just would say yes because <laughs> you're a good guy. Oh, well, but you. like most people are gonna be like, eh, yeah, what what are you gonna do with it? You know what I mean? Like there's right. gonna be like, and I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. It's just different when you just straight out ask for money. So like yeah. it's like giving a service, right? So like, man, yes, you know where the money's going, you know the direction that somebody wants to use with it so you can buy a mug mm -hmm. and you get something in return it's like hey it's like an exchange of services right, right. it's like well, economy it's, <laughs> it's it's more like to me i think it's more about like the reminder that you did something good yeah and that and that's what i liked about it too it's just like because i have no problem i would have given you 12 to 15 dollars for for the cause like if that was something you know on your page and i was following it and i mm -hmm. would consider doing it i the, the mug i don't know more or less if it if it would have an effect on a, like a normal person that's outside of this, like if they would decide to do it or not. 
But it's it's there when you see it, you're reminded of doing something good. Because how often do you, have you donated something and then just kind of forgotten about it? All unless time. it's unless it's been brought up yeah. in a conversation, which is much much less you know frequent or common to happen than yeah. looking at a bug and being like, yeah, oh, I did yeah. something good, you know? Right. And well, and I like just and it. and I think that's like that's exactly that's a good point because like I that's the point you know like kind of creating the mission statement of Crazy Face Uno has been an evolution as well kind of like just mm-hmm. kind of finding the way of like what is it that I want how how do I want to people to read and visually like as they're reading know what with one line what Crazy Face Uno is you know right and so this is from this point forward and, and one of my checklist to-do list is to make sure that all the platforms have the same message you know and same like a like a same thing like a banner or just like a like a service mission statement, statement. mission statement yeah that's, or that's like description you know and right. when you're asked to describe what is crazy face uno you know and even though it's the like one liner part you just need one one line yeah. and so here's what it is it's inspiring others mm-hmm. to do good and make a difference in their local and global communities right while being entertained. <laughs> <laughs> While being entertained. But that's like a byproduct of, like, the right. entertainment is how, and that's like how, you know, we've talked about it a little bit on here, but, like, that's how I want to see things morph is, like, yeah, you can buy a mug. You can buy merchandise. That's going to go towards fueling the things that we do. Yeah, well, and if um, you enjoy the podcast, too, that's something that you're going to hear about pretty frequently, yeah. I would assume. You know, because whoever comes on, hopefully, you know, you're able to at least talk about what you're doing currently with yeah. Crazy Face Uno and, like, what's... You know, like, I haven't asked, you know, I saw you did the mugs, and that was mm-hmm. specifically for your friend. Um, yeah, I just did that. this one campaign. So, like, right. the mugs are still, like, I, they're still on the... Right. On, but I was going to ask, have you, have you moved on to another project yet, or is it... Or another I have, actually. Thank you for asking. Yesterday, This, this I, was not planned. This no. is not a plug. This is my genuine I curiosity. was getting to it, and you just, <laughs> you yeah, you got to it. So, <clears throat> one direction that I'm I'm kind of exploring into, which will be... Interesting. We could. We'll see how this goes. But yeah. um, is that I have a digital download for sale. I just got it up on the store yesterday, digital and I download. haven't. I haven't promoted it, but I will be like on the social media pages and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's what you can buy a digital download, right? Like a lot of people, like you can buy like workout plans or oh, whatever these okay. different types of things, right? It's like so a document. You yes. Okay. So this is what you're buying is is a document, but here's what it is. Right, so it's under the label on the website of podcast games. Okay. So I want to I want to engage people. I want to give people an opportunity to mm-hmm. one, you're buying something, you're you're funding, doing good and making a difference, and and our ability here at Crazy Face Uno, which involves me and my wife and other people <laughs> friends that I bring in to help me do these different things. Right. Um. But you're allowing us to just kind of, you know, do good and to make videos and make content that's going to be entertaining that will give back to the community and inspire others to, you know, do good and and make a difference. So this is what it is. I, it's called Words and Phrases. So for $10, you can buy this digital download called Words and Phrases. And what this does is it gives you the opportunity to message me a word or a phrase that I have to integrate into the podcast. Oh, there you go. So it could be okay. Uh, whatever you know. I Obviously, mean, you're keeping yeah. it like you're not going to be vulgar. You can't be like we can't well, be I too mean, crazy and can, wild. I mean, if they want to buy for ten bucks and send you vulgar things for you not to say on air, that's fine. You st- <laughs> yeah, you can have <laughs> I me mean, say not things to say. That could be fun too, right? Like we can see how this evolves. You can't say the word um through your entire Ooh, podcast. See? Yeah, I. I do try. I have other words that I say. <laughs> I try to avoid the word um. But. Um, yeah. Uh, so but I yeah, would, so like a, a word or a phrase. So you could go. I would like, say I would add, if I was to do this for you, I'd say quick do a barrel roll. Yeah. See right, and then I have to integrate that into either it's like me telling a story, and I'm like say, in the middle of the story, I have to say, and then he said, "Quick, do a barrel roll," <laughs> and and you know whatever. So like that's the kind of thing. I think it'll be fun. It'll be is, kind of this no, little. It's, piece I think it's that, a great idea. Um, the barrel roll. That was a that was a movie factoid. That, yeah, this is from the first Transformers movie. Remember when that came out in 2007? The first one. Yeah. Yeah. In 2007, everyone was super excited about it, and they had this contest. 
and I don't know, it kind of reminds me of it, but they have a contest where people could write in a line of dialogue and they would vote on it. And whichever one won would be put into the actual movie said by Peter Cullen, who voices Optimus Prime. That's really fun. And the first one that was, it was dominating was Quick Do a Barrel Roll. <laughs> and I can you just imagine the first quick live action Transformers, like Peter Cullen, Quick Do a Barrel Roll. <laughs> like how funny that would be. And it was crushing in the polls. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like a week before it, the, like it was supposed to be up, it got taken down. Uh-huh. And so, yeah. and so everyone was pissed because the one that actually won was uh, "Freedom is the right of all sentient beings," which is used in the movie. But yeah. Anyway, it's just a fun little movie fact for you. That's funny. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. Like, come that's on. awesome. Did Quick. you know that the Justin Bieber documentary by John Chu? Uh, his I, I hadn't seen it, but did you know that he did a a little like same type of deal where oh, they did a competition? Yeah. Like, you submit your video to this one, like if you singing or like create a video of yeah like a music video type deal of this specific song right and he they'd pick one and it'd be in like the outtakes of the movie or like the the end yes, of the movie. i love that kind of stuff and that's it's like moving back to crazy phase Uno, it's like exactly kind of like what you're doing like you could send in something funny yeah that i would you love have that. to work into a story yeah, i think it's a great I'm, idea i've got one here's one of my notes <coughs> so like Excuse i me. i'm continually like uh, create a giveaway, like a competition for a gift. So everyone who makes a video, um, asking people to follow or like, or everybody that makes a video saying like, this is what I did, like doing something good, right? Like, mm-hmm. um, I take a picture and like make a caption and you just go into a drawing for, yeah. you know, something. There's a, another company called, uh, Cotopaxi. They're like a llama. They use like the, they use llamas. I know it's my <laughs> wife is the one. She's obsessed with llamas and she's the I one that's found this. Is. Um, but <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, this is actually, they have a thing called Questable. This is also their koozie right here. Very nice. Questable. Make sure the people on the video can see it. <laughs> can um, the microphone pick up chance? <laughs> they can sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> At least I can always hear it. And oh, so yeah. I just don't know if you know, like, like, sometimes you're like, what is that sound? And it's, it's probably him. Chance snoring. Just yeah. Peeing. Just a happy little puppy down there. He is a snorer. <laughs> sometimes he's, <coughs> yeah, he is a snorer. Um, but yeah, so they actually have shirts that are like sweatshirts and shirts that say do good on them. Oh, cool. And I think it'd be cool to like buy from them. Like whoever wins gets, you know, a gift card for Cotapaxi or what, you know, whatever, whatever it is. So you can buy like something that says do good or like yeah. one of their products that... Is, um, is uh, merchandising something that is coming for Crazy Face Uno eventually? Eventually, yeah. I, I just so actually... Be a whole other facet of, you know... Yeah. Like how do you go about that? Um, right now, I just bought 50 stickers uh, with, like, the mm-hmm. that picture that's on everything. It just says crazyfaceuno.com. Like how did you... Yeah, it's a picture from Thailand when Dana and I were on our honeymoon last right. year. Right, and what, did you just run it through a... I, it's just through an app that turns it into like a cartoon is what no, I was like one really cool picture yeah and it just I like came across that one and it was like smiling and I thought it would look cool like with all the different like background stuff mm-hmm. in that it, font. It, it turns out that it, it turned out really well yeah I wonder if you could make a t-shirt with crazy face Uno with just with that like pattern on there because that think, would be really I think cool you, yeah so I, mean, I, I don't need your face on it I just <laughs> google <laughs> yeah I know <laughs> Unfortunately, that's the part that's like the weird part a little bit. Your like, face at, at some point when I have a little more money to to invest into it, I'd like to have a graphic designer just like design a logo, mm-hmm. you know, like CF with a one behind it or I don't know, something like yeah. you could you could go a million different directions like with mm-hmm. Crazy Face Uno, Crazy Face, like there's some fonts that I like. The stickers will have like a, two different fonts, like one's the website down the side where I'm looking at it and the other one's just like a like a kind of a cursive but it's not it's just like a fancy little font that says crazy face right. on it we're millennials um, we don't know what cursive is anymore i know yeah right <laughs> Jeez, it's gone but yeah i don't know like something like that um obviously mugs would probably be one of the next things i'm going like to your, like mugs yeah. with crazy face on but it. it's i just haven't really got to that point since i'm selling mugs i think i should probably have one with like with crazy face actually Uno. your thing on there yeah, yeah. well because i wonder like when you start to get to that stuff, like if there's a company that you could go through that, so is shirts like specifically because I know there's a bunch. That shirts like would American be. I, or, here's what I would like know. to do with shirts is I would like to. I, I just googled last night actually. Um, I actually have some experience doing my own uh, screen press, like screen print. Yeah. yeah. So like you can buy kits for 
300 bucks, you know, online or whatever to get any entry level kits to do your Well, in that way, you only have to go out and you have to just get like plain old t-shirts, right? Yeah. So you buy your t-shirts. So that's, that would be the direction I would probably go. I just think it'd Versus be more like fun going to... going through like a third party vendor. Yeah. Be, yeah. I just think it'll be cheaper. Um, so more money allotted to, at least in the beginning, you know. Um, yeah, what's well, 300 bucks, you know, like the initial the investment is investment, more, but, but then again, I think in the long run, that would be more money than you could up. donate, because that's the, that would be the goal, right, of all your merchandising is another way to, to, yeah, to know, give create back, funds yeah. to give back, mm-hmm. so I think in the long run, that would probably be the better way to go. Yeah, and, and then you can just, you know, you can change your, your image, so you could do multiple different types of shirts and mm-hmm. eventually get to that point where your screen print you know you can wash those out and like re do that and you can mm-hmm. you just have to i'd have to find a place wherever i'm at to maybe help me do that because there's like a special machine like a lighting with your emulsion like okay it's like a, there's yeah, a well, i'm ready i'm ready it, for some merch when it, when it uh, pops yeah out. it'll be fun it's just another investment so you gotta i gotta oh i thought, I thought you made an investment of of like me well <laughs> it's in it, it is i mean this is another thing of Mr. Beast. He always talks about his investors, like yeah. the people that buy his merchandise are his investors, and it is that's the truth. That that's is, in yeah. that world and the business world. That's what you're investing into the brand, right. you know. Especially if you um, have frequent people doing it, which I imagine you know the people that you're closest to will be the yeah. ones that are the most frequent. In For terms sure, of which has been the cool part too to follow. Like Facebook is every day, you know, like there's more and more people. If I know who your real friends are. Well, <laughs> no, but like there are new people that are finding it, right? That yeah. I'm not friends with. So like the first hundred people was, are like all my friends. Yeah, I you was know? actually shocked because um, I shared your post yesterday of that I was coming on the podcast, and like I just did it because it was like, oh, it's, it's cool, you know? Like, yeah, it's well, really fun. I appreciate and, it because that's oh, like, yeah. that's how you get the name out. And, well, and then a ton. Like the last time I checked, I don't ever post things on Facebook. I don't do it very yeah. often, so this might seem like a low number, but I had like. 60 70 people like it yeah and that to me like that's a huge amount because i just right. you know and it's not if i'm on facebook i'm yeah. like looking at articles well and i know some videos. of those people like the page too um, that's awesome like because there was a good probably like 10 people that knew like since you posted that yeah that it was like i know i think a couple of them were like maybe your sister even like like the page sure um or like people that i think were maybe family or friends that but they, they, you know, they um, like it, and then you know, exactly, I, have, that's, I have family that they're up in Wyoming, they're up in um, yeah North Branch. But that's well, that's and it's a, it's just interesting too because there. like the there are Facebook ads. You can pay for different ads. You can mm-hmm. pay for different. And I have played around with that some things. But some one of the like the options on there essentially is to market to. You can have a post so like mm-hmm. this podcast, and I can market it just to the followers of Crazy Foos Face Uno right. and their friends. So oh, it's okay. like people that are like within that community, right? It's so just it's like, like building that closer knit. Well, it's like when people. you when you post on Facebook, you have the option or like your profile, you can set your privacy status. Yeah, right? to like who I can gotcha. see it and who can't. It's so it's basically the same type of idea, but it's just interesting. Like it's just things that are like entering my world that I never thought about before. Just like we were talking about. I mean, mm-hmm. right away, it's like learning by doing. You don't realize it's something you need to know until it comes up, and you're just like, oh crap! Like I gotta. Yeah, I figure this out. Yeah, probably very similar to like teaching. Well, and the reason because I listened to your conversation with um, Josh and about coaching, and so eventually I think we'll get into like teaching. But you know, it could be special level. But also, like I, I listened to a lot of stuff you guys were talking about and thinking yeah. about how it applies to like teaching drumline and stuff. Yeah. So there's probably a lot of like there's similarities. We, we, with what you we're and I've had about. plenty of conversations. Yeah. There is a ton of like, carryover or similarities, overlaps. Yeah. You know, in terms of just that type of yeah I, 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 man, I had a conversation with a couple friends katie and her boyfriend um mike um and we were talking this weekend and man some of the different conversations we were talking about it's like it's such a complex like conversation mm-hmm. right you we we all have like an idea of how but it's so complex Right, like everything right. that goes into coaching, everything that goes into the education system and the school systems, yeah. and the way that people do, like you, that whole conversation. It's like we had a way that we, you know, some some specific things that we talked about, you know, about pride within the sports and like the challenges that we have with the the lottery and these different things. And there's pros and cons yeah. of every single one of them, and there's not there's one. Clear, which lottery are we talking about? Uh, just like the you can, you can basically like. 
uh, pick which school you want to go oh, to. Oh, yeah, oh, the open enrollment the conversation. open enrollment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then it turns into kind and of And that like was, a lottery, I found basically. that one really <laughs> interesting. I found that part of the conversations really interesting when you guys were talking about that. Because yeah. Because that's basically, you know, because I didn't know, because I, I grew up in the suburbs, so I, I have little to zero experience with, like, inner city, so I had no mm-hmm. idea that that was the way that well, it was Well, same for me. Like, I grew up in a very small town, 26,000. I went to school in the same district that it is attached to the building that we work at. Right, So I yeah. went to... And it's it's pretty big, so I get no idea that that was a thing. It's like though know, you go, you know where where you go. But in our districts, we have different problems with basically like gerrymandering, like drawing, you know, drawing uh, district lines. And so like when mm-hmm. a, when another district added a third high school, you saw them draw the lines, and you saw the inequality of the three high schools, and you're like, how are how is this happening? Like, mm-hmm. it, yeah. It's crazy stuff. And it, like so many other factors come in. There's so many. And, and, and that's, that's what I mean it so by complex. it's so complex. It's just, exactly. there's not, you can't, man, I, it would be, it would be, <laughs> it'd be nice if we, you know, could just be like, well, there's a clear cut solution. This is how you do it. And that's how the politicians kind of, kind of spin things in a Betsy. lot of ways. But, um, <laughs> but it's just not, it's, there's not a, it's not an easy thing. It's a, a long-term, it's gotta be long-term goals and it's hard to have, get momentum on some of those long-term goals when you yeah. have new leaders because 10 years from now, if you had somebody that had the same, uh, path to get, you know, they wanted to take something from point A to point B mm-hmm. and two different political the figures were able to be aligned to, to see that through over that 10 year period of time, mm-hmm. you would see drastic impacts. Right. But the problem is, is that we have these like up, down, you know, back over four, everybody's got a different right. idea. So every couple of years, two steps like, forward, two steps back. Yeah. And so it's just this little problem. There's, there's pros and cons to that as well. Like that's, uh, yeah. I th- with a lot of it, when it comes to like teaching and coaching, I think there's a lot of like basic philosophies or just ideals or things yeah. like that. And that, and that stuff, I think you see line up a lot. And then after that, then, then all the specific factors start to come in. Yeah. And, and every single thing that, that comes into play after that. Yeah. Completely affects people's approach. And then you can have a lot of similarities in how people would view it based on this factor, A, B, or C, whatever. Mm-hmm. But the more you add in, the more you add on top of it, the more yeah. unique and individualistic it gets. But Absolutely. that's something that our field has helped a lot in terms of like coaching or just yeah. learning, teaching more in general. It's just how unique yeah. our field is. Yeah. It's, how did you get into drum? Cause that's what you, you're a drum line instructor. Yeah. I, I work with two different high school drum okay. lines actually. So I know you, obviously you were a musician, you were into yeah. drum line. You, did you mm-hmm. tell us about that process of oh, like yeah. becoming, yeah, yeah. getting involved in drum line, getting involved in well, m- quite a music <laughs> to where you are now? Yeah. Well, cause music is what led me to my current job as is now too. I mean, it's, it's all kind of interrelated yeah. kind of in an interesting way. Um, so the expectation as a kid for me, um, was that you, uh, did band in middle school, right? And so for us, it starts in like sixth grade, and then you know you you do your like instrument selection. So I don't know. I mean, it's I think it's a pretty common thing in mm-hmm. schools. You know, band starts in sixth grade. Sure. And yeah. so I wanted to play the drums, and I knew that for a long time. And they said that you know they strongly encourage or required that you have two years of piano experience. Okay. Did they make you take? So when I I was in band, mm-hmm. sixth grade, same same deal. Or yep. like fifth grade, you take this like little. Our band director had this like little quiz or little, little test you did. Yeah. And it was like sounds and like a whatever. And then you were oh. supposed to like mark it down. And then yeah. it kind of just, it kind of funneled you into specific areas of like, oh, you're like the, this type of like response to these sounds generally do well in this genre, like woodwinds or oh, yeah. brass. Oh, yeah. That section. Or, yeah, yeah. Like, and, and you had to get, I think, a perfect on the like little quiz thing in order to be in like, the drum like yeah, percussion the color, the percussion yeah uh no we didn't do it that way we actually had sit down interviews with the middle school band that's kind of cool though yeah and it was outside of the school day so you had to go with your yeah. parents and you had to sit down and it's funny my sit down um was with um was with the guy who i now teach one of the drum lines with yeah so he was my sixth grade seventh grade eighth grade ninth grade and tenth grade 
band director. Wow, that's cool. It, and and so I've known him for a very long time. It, yeah, yeah. It it definitely um, he's and he's an absolutely wonderful person and he's a brilliant teacher. Uh, so I mean, at one point we can get into like how much influence he's had on me. Yeah, I love having to. conversations with him now is great. You know, like sure. talking about teaching and just approaches and philosophies, like just asking. And you questions. can probably see. <clears throat> oh, definitely. Like look back and see how he molded you or like. <clears throat> oh yeah. Groomed you in that way. Oh yeah, and and he was probably my age. No. Yeah. When Isn't that crazy was, to think about? Yeah. Like just in general. Like, yeah, definitely. That and blows my mind all the I, time. It's always funny, though. It's like, you, you remember something you did. And I was like, oh, was I like that? And yeah. Just, and he just laughs. He goes, <laughs> yeah, you were. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't even. Yeah, there's definitely. There's some people out there, if you're listening. I'm just sorry. I'm just sorry. Yeah, for all my teachers, yeah. Uh, it's not, we'll not get too much into it, but definitely. <laughs> you know, I, I feel bad about some of it. <laughs> Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so we had to do like a sit down interview. Uh, but everyone in my family is also kind of expected to take piano lessons too. Okay. And so we started in fourth grade. And so I've been playing piano the whole time. And that's how I got into percussion. And that was just, that was just kind of like my identity in yeah. high school. Like that was kind of what I did. Most mm-hmm. of my closest friends were all in the band program and whatnot. And um, so I decided to go um, into music education. Okay. Um which was, I wasn't sure, even as a senior, like, I knew music was my thing. Yeah. But I wasn't even sure if I wanted to do that. And, you know, having conversations, I kind of, kind of like, talked into, like, you know, follow your passion kind of a thing. Yeah. And so I don't, I don't, I don't regret any of the experience. But when, kind of when we get to the end of the story, you'll kind of see maybe why I say that. But, so I went to the U of M. Yeah. And I got accepted to their music program. Okay. But I wasn't accepted to the school. So the only reason I got in was because I was expect accepted to the, the music program. And so that's what got me in. And then I auditioned for the in, uh, the drum line. U of M is in Minnesota. Go Gophers. <laughs> Shameless plug there. Yeah. And that was a... That's cool though. It, yeah, I did it for five years. <laughs> nice. It took me five years to get a four-year degree. Nice. Which is fine. It's, yeah. It's whatever. But I, music, I remember so it was music education. It was, was music ed, and I remember the first audition for the Go for Drumline was like the most intimidating thing I've ever done. Yeah, like I I was there and um I was in terms of in terms of like some of the instruments not at the quality in terms of my playing as some of them are, and yeah. I remember calling my mom and and. Um, we just had a death in the family and there was a wake. I was like, I want to leave. I just want to come to the wake. Like, and she's like, you need to just, you need to stay. You need to do it. You're going to regret not doing it. Yeah. Um, and so I stayed and I did it and I, I made, I made it and I made the bass drum section, which was great. And that's what I did. Um, and it, it was, it was great. I mean, it was like a whole little family. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a whole nother thing getting into like marching band, you know, especially Big Ten style and stuff. But um, yeah, but those types of, I mean, the family aspect of things. Those I mean, are my playing closest soccer, friends. Yeah, playing soccer. My closest like, friends. Yeah, I never, I was never on varsity. Like I, I never made a varsity team when I was playing. But I, it's just like you were so close to those people. Those are the people you hung out with. Those are the people you like spent your time with. Generally, yep. like I went to a small college as well, so it wasn't like. I, I hung out with a lot I of different not, people. You was not a small Right, college. right. But, like, <laughs> um, but yeah, those those groups and, like, your experience and time spent, like, with those people is it, it defines, invaluable. It like defines my college experience. Yeah. Is really what it comes down 100%. to. 100%. Um, I mean, crazy days, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what exactly. I mean? Like, like, I legitimately. I cannot tell you my drumline nickname. I, I can tell you one of them. I can't tell you the other one. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear one of them. Uh, six. Was my, was my nickname? Six. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so my first my first year, there was four Eric's on the drum line, <laughs> and three of them were on the bass drums. And ah. it was bass drums four, five, and six were all named Eric, and so the other two already so had nicknames. You were bass. That's what you played. Yep. My freshman year was bass six. Okay. And uh, moved up to other higher bass drums um, later on. Nice. Um, but so bass four and bass five, they already had other nicknames. So at first it was Eric Four, Eric Five, Eric Six, but then it was you know uh, Sidebirds and Creeks. Those were their nicknames. Yeah. Already, and so they just kept on calling me Eric Six, and then eventually it's just Six. Yeah. I only played bass drum Six that first year, 
but I was called six my entire collegiate yeah. career. I still respond to it every once in a while, yeah. like if I see some of those people. Well, when you got here, you called me crazy face. It felt natural. Like, it felt normal. And see, I, I just said that because I didn't know it was an actual nickname. It's funny, but but like it got shortened in college too. Craze, crazy. Yeah. Like, what yeah. up, craze? What up, crazy? <laughs> you know, what up, crazy face? Like, yeah. it, but that, isn't that how nicknames go? It just like you mm-hmm. get these like little pieces, and mm-hmm. it's kind of fun. So you, so you were base. You were the six your freshman year. Yep. So you did five years in the in the band and. Uh, yeah, I, well, it took me five years to finish my program. And so were you in it each year or no? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did five years. Okay. Um, one year was cut a little short. Um, that's a story we don't need to get into. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. That's a that's a story for like a five hour podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I did bass drum six. I did three. I did two, and then my last year I did snare drum. Okay. Um, cool. And what's interesting about you know because eventually I think we'll talk about like the drum lines I teach and stuff because um, one of them is competitive and 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 the the U of M is like Big Ten drumming. It's not competitive. Yeah, you know, but it's like college, you know, and so very, very talented players. But then, like when you when we teach the competitive stuff, it's a completely different world. And so, like uh, DCI, you know, if you follow any of that, those kind of things, those those are like that's like the NFL of marching bands and drum lines. Okay. Stuff. So I've got one of your videos up here from. Oh yeah, I think it'd be fun to like listen to it and you just kind of explain what's going on. Yeah, I can. But yeah. we can we can snare drum kind of like spurred that along. Yeah, these guys so are, not all of them are snare, right? Or uh, they have they have I depending have. upon which one. No, no, they, no. they'll have this, the snare lines in front and they have the bass line behind it. Yeah. you'll hear the tenor okay. line too. So this is uh, I don't know which group it is. Um, footage of oh the Crusaders. Uh, so they're in the like this summer they'll be doing the DCI DCA like the. But this group. is one of your groups that you. No no no, no. this is no, just this is me. Something. This is not my groups at all. The, oh this no. is something separate. Yeah this is just like okay. the best of the best. Okay. Um so yeah you can play real quick. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. It's it's not very long. I don't know if you guys can hear it, but we're not sponsored, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. <laughs> well, and it's it's on Facebook. It's on the Vic Firth page. Yeah, so this is like competitive. Yeah, well, and, and it's in, you it's, guys can't see, and you guys can't see on the video either, but they're like in sync, like that little ding, ding, ding. That's ding. yeah, the metronome. They're um. Oh yeah, I like this one because of how many splits they do. Uh, like you can see, like half half of them are doing things with the other. Yeah, well, and like their foot movement, like they've got like footwork the whole whole yep. way through. Yeah, so and, like that's, little that's, just been in the knees, and I know that's part of. Yep, it's called marking time, but it's how you. You know, because this is this is stationary. When they do their performances, they're on the football field, sure, and they're moving. So all it's like over they're the walking place. right now. Yeah, it's but it just it's like they're all in sync. Like they're it's like dancers. If you were to watch dancers, you can see they're all in line and they're all in sync. Yeah. And well, and and um, you, so you can see the music at the bottom of the page. And like this, yeah. the, when you like actually see their hands and like what they're doing, it's insane. And you're like, yeah, I have no so idea fast. what they're playing. And then. You look at the music down below, and it kind of gives you an idea. Yeah, but good like, luck trying to keep up with that. Like, <laughs> yeah, well, they have these insane polyrhythms and crazy stuff like that. But what what these guys do, and, and I, I think I mentioned it, but this is like basically like the NFL of like marching bands. Okay, is like what the the talent level um, that these guys have. Like, this is the highest level. These are like global competitions. Yeah, uh, and they and they usually have it at. Um, at TCF, they've had they've had it there for the last couple of years. Okay. You know, they'll they'll go around the country, yeah, and then do it at different football stadiums, usually sure. college ones. But I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so good. And so this Crazy. is this is the kind of writing that we do for uh, one of the two drum lines I work with. Yeah, I try. I, I don't write anything nearly this this good. But it's also a different talent level too. So like, right, you gotta, we're, we're you doing we're doing the pander. high school version. <laughs> Of what this is, and so yeah, so it keeps going. We can be done with that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Yeah, yeah, that's really. But but yeah, so like, so that's that's the competition side of it, and that's like one of the groups I work with. But also like, there's like the entertainment side of it too, which is much more like what I did at the U of M. Yeah. Okay. So that's more like the entertainment side. And you can be entertained by this. I mean, just like watching the NFL, you're entertained by it. But it's a yeah, different yeah. it's a different level, you know. Yep. But for sure. Um, 
so what does that so then now we're to you you kind of coach Anna did you kind of explain how you got into instructing being a, a instructor from you took all right you took uh Piano lessons, you did that from fourth grade till sixth grade. You sat oh, no, down. I, piano lessons was all well, through all high through, school. But yeah. uh, you sat down, did the little interview with your mm-hmm. band instructor that's now a guy you work with. Yep. Uh, you started band in sixth grade. Yep, played all the way through. All the way through, know, got to college. Did, you did music college, ed. Music ed, five years there. You graduated. Student teaching is when things really changed for me. Okay. So student teaching and special ed, or not special ed, sorry. I'll have to do that eventually. Uh, student teaching for band is what I think threw me into a funk. Okay. Um, and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do because of the experience wasn't great. And what and the mm. problem with, that happened was it ruined, it ruined music for me. Music as a hobby, as an interest, as a passion. Right. It's, you know, teaching band just made music a job and it took a long time for me to like reconcile that but it eventually it came to the point where I didn't want my profession to ruin my favorite thing in the world my passion yeah and and so it took a lot of time to kind of realize that and coaching so I, is really like it's very much a thing in coaching like you but coaching drumline is different than teaching band Yes. And so I still get... I just even mean on, like, my end of things, yeah. of like, being like being a wrestling coach. Yeah. It, it, it hasn't ruined it by any means. But for, but for like, some people, it, it heightens it. It, it does, and it kind of changed... It, it, like you had mentioned, it, like, it takes it from a hobby, a, a, a passion, a, yep. something that you enjoy, and it turns it into a little bit of, like, this is... This is my job now, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I don't have an option. This is, like, this is something I choose to do. I enjoy it, but... Mm-hmm. It, it shifts focus a little Cause bit. Because you're not... It, it, what the big focus and the big change is you're not the one engaging in the activity anymore. Mm. You're the one leading the activity. Yes. And so you have to have an amount of passion and you have to like that side of it. Yes. And if you can... Because it's different. It's very different. It's the same and it's completely different at the same time. Mm-hmm. Like, it's, it's really weird, but like if you can't handle not being actively engaged in the activity then you shouldn't be a coach and you shouldn't be a teacher and that's where a lot of you see bad coaches and bad teachers yes or instructors that's where you see the the bad ones is because well, they have to get too far off off this topic like off what we're talking about but isn't this like just fundamental to uh oh you can hear the birds chirping up there those are upstairs that's nice what, that's picking up pretty interesting yeah. anyway um no, when you have, uh, you know, people, like you had said, people t- telling you even in college, and, and I had the same thing in high school, saying to follow your passions, yep. which is great. It's a great incentive. And, and like, I do agree there is an element of that because when you follow your passions, if you can fall in love with that process, mm-hmm. then you never work a day in your life. But That's it's also, the whole concept. But right? it's also different. Like, if you told Brent, follow your passion, Brent's passion is creative writing. Right. That doesn't change for him. No. The, the What engaging in creative writing doesn't change if he chooses to make that his profession, right? Music, coaching, teaching, that changes. It changes because you're not. I'm not actively engaging in making something you music. have to do, not something you want to do anymore. Right. In some ways, and not that you don't want to do it. It's just that it becomes a requirement, not a like, yes. not a. It's it no longer becomes a choice in some ways. Right, and just the activity itself is is right. different. You're yeah. not there. And it changes. Yeah, the way it looks. You're on a different side of things. You have to perform. You have to perform as in like achieve and like have success because you have to teach. You yeah. have to get somebody from point A to point B. Otherwise, oh, yeah. like, so it's like self-worth. You're reflecting on yourself as well as like the outcome and like the quality that you're producing, like in creating. It's like, yeah. it's a whole thing. Like you can, you can dive into that a lot. I mean, being on yeah. successful, you know, uh, drumline teams or being on yeah. what that looks like versus being on a successful wrestling program what that means and josh and i kind of got into that a little bit of like you start to define and you start to shift your focus of what success looks like in oh some definitely, ways. definitely and it's it's a it's a must-do thing and people can say well that's just the mark of you know somebody that's not winning or whatever but it's it's mm-hmm. what keeps you going and keeps you coming back. It's what keeps you motivated. It's yeah. it's, it's a it's a mental shift and it's right. it's a mental focus. And I think it's an evolving 
uh, mental component because just because that's where you're at at that moment doesn't mean that that's where you'll be in a year or two years or three years. And you can shift that focus to be... Or, I mean, if you can look over the past of the current current or previous season where you were at the start mm-hmm. of the season yep. versus where you are now. Yep. And that, and that that's the mark of made. a better coach, a better instructor, a better and, like, teacher. And the, all those different so things. for the two drum lines I teach, one of them is very competitive based. It's competition. Yep. Um, and yep. so that one, you'll see, you'll see the same types of things and the things that you and Josh were talking about in coaching. That was all of that resonated with me because that's what it looks like for competition based stuff. Yep. But the other one I do um, is entertainment. But the thing that doesn't change is when you're working on a program or just even if you're not, um, you know, engaging in competitions, you know, because the one we do parades, we play at the football games, you know, even just because you're engaging in that doesn't mean that you can't and don't need to set expectations, set a culture, talk about growth. What does success look like even though you're not doing a competition? You know what I mean? Yeah. So that part stays the same. It's just it takes on a little bit different because you're not you're not measuring yourself against other people when you're right. doing it for entertainment right um but at the same time we're at a parade and there's other groups there and so that's what my my students will do they'll measure themselves against the other groups that are there right and what does success look like in those yes. types of ways and and i think that that's important uh in some ways because Obviously, I'm looking at it through the coaching perspective, uh, like wrestling perspective, the sports side. Um, but I think it's important to see where other people are that are at different levels than you mm-hmm. and to know what to strive for and to seek and to, to go after, right? Right. Because um, I don't ever want it to turn into, um, I'm not good enough. We're not as good as these other people. Yeah. I never want my, my students to ever feel that way. Yeah. And that's that's the only thing I get worried about in terms of like competition for music it's different in competitive sports because that's the goal of sports is to compete Mm -hmm. you know and so if you're going into so for the competition based group that's what they're signing up for and that's what we're going and that's okay but like i don't like that aspect creeping into the entertainment side like well we're not as good as these other people because that's not the point of this group Mm -hmm. it's a different thing i think that we can both agree though that the the thing that kind of binds our two different like quote coaching Mm -hmm. instructing coaching um thing together is that josh and i touched on it too that the important thing is to see progress yes and to see people progressing Mm -hmm. down the like path that we want to see you obviously we all create little goals for ourselves whether we do it subconsciously or not whether it's vocal or not like you have an idea when you look at one specific individual in your drum line you're Mm -hmm. like you need to be here by the end of this right and like or i think you can be here by the end of this yeah or man i hope you can you know there's different ways to look at each individual thing right and you're but the goal is is it doesn't change Mm -hmm. in a team you have the same things you want to see your team progress in a certain direction it's a it's a group Um, and on an individual basis What's, yeah. what's interesting, though, is some people will ask, um, video, video all good? Yeah, it's so good. Some people will ask, like, how do you have a competition for music? Because music is, in general, such a subjective thing. Sure. And then I just try to explain to them, like, it is and it isn't. The way you play music isn't subjective. Like, mm-hmm. the best ways to play instruments, like, right. there are, it's, it's called technique. Like, there's proven ways that are better yeah. and more conducive than others. And then after that... You know, when, because in the competition world, like some of it is like the composition of the show. Yeah. And so, like, we write the shows for one of the, right. one of the groups that it's we work with. It's the showmanship with. part of it. The showmanship is a big part, the performance of it. How it evokes a feeling, how yeah. it evokes, you know, we, like how it all progresses the shows, and brings yep. you along the storyline or yep, whatever. Because all the shows are based around like a theme or like a, a title, like an idea. Our show last year was, um, oh gosh, I can't remember now. Oh, artificial intelligence, which, okay. I mean, how many other, you know, times have you seen, you know, what happens when robots decide to wake up and become autonomous, you know, that kind of idea. And so it's not necessarily like the notes you're selecting, it's are you getting the ideas across? That's what they go for, like, for composition. And so it is subjective and it's not at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ex- so now how does this translate? So this whole part of your life the music side of things getting into Mm -hmm. um you know the school that you you instruct yeah 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 i know um how did that now how did that inter 
interact with and like uh, like kind of blend itself with teaching and getting into yeah. working at the special education school that we were. I at. was asked to come back and work because I did the drum line for the high school I went to, which is the one that I teach at now. Yeah. With with the teacher that was you know that had a sit down meeting in sixth grade with. Yep. And so I was asked as a freshman because I was doing the U of M line to come back and coach and just and help. You know, he was kind of running it, and mm-hmm. I was there to kind of help. And that was in 2008, and I had been working with the group ever since. So I think it's been 11 years now. And now it's he, you know, the guy I work with, he does the administrative stuff. He, he schedules rehearsals. He makes sure we have all of our stuff, and I run the rehearsals. Okay. So I am the head instructor, but he's, like, the one in charge of the group. And so it's a really good dynamic for two people because, you know, he's a full-time teacher, too. He's got the band program. Yeah. You know, and... You know, one of the another reason why I'm glad I'm not a, a band director anymore is just how much extra work is spent outside of the school day. It's insa- oh, yeah. it's insane what those guys do. Yeah. Um, and so he and I totally get it. So he sets it up, I take care of it. Uh, and so I was I've been doing that group since 2008. Sure. And then um, the guy I was asked to come help out with the other group probably about five six years ago now because um, the guy that um, asked me to come over is we were on the drum line with you together we've been close close friends ever since we write music together we do our film competitions together um and so he asked me to come over and and help with that group and so we've been writing their show um and working with them for five years so okay so like coaching drumline it wasn't I was always fine with continuing to do that because it was something extra and drumline has always been fun and even though I knew I didn't want to be a band director anymore um, those stuff, that stuff was always there. It was always fun. Okay. One of the things I was actually going to ask you, because we were talking about coaching, you're talking about teaching. Yeah. And one of the most interesting things I've learned so much over the last few years, uh, and one of the things that I finally realized is that how I needed to change my approach was because drumming and learning how to drum was never hard for me. Mm. It came very naturally. Yeah. Okay. And so... I never had to work too hard to get it, to, to be good at it. Sure. You know, I'm not saying I'm, I'm amazing by any means. Like, I'm not like those DCI No, guys. but I understand what you're saying. I know what and you're yeah, saying. it was, you know, music, it's, it came very, very naturally. And over time, like, when I first started, I would get frustrated with the students because they, just, they weren't getting it as quickly as I expected because I was measuring everything up against <laughs> yeah. myself. Yeah. Do you, as, as a coach, oh, as, as yeah. coaching sports competitively, have you had that? Yeah, experience? no, I, I, I have to check my patience mm-hmm. a lot. Yeah, I mean, it's the same because th- there's multiple elements to this. One thing that really will, will tick me off is like, if I know you weren't paying attention and mm-hmm. I've got to show it to you more than once. Right. That's going to frustrate me real fast. Right. But that's right? that's not about actually wrestling. That's just about paying attention. Yes. Absolutely. If they, watch, if they watch the first time and didn't get it, though, yep. that's a completely different thing. Yeah. It's really hard. And it, yeah. and it's... it's So the part that... Uh, and it's finding your... It's... Mm, whew, it's adapting and adjusting to each individual student, especially with wrestling, mm-hmm. right? And this is kind of what Josh and I talked about this a little bit. Uh, I think with the way that we interact and the way that we encourage leaders to lead, right. but it, it translates right into the sport the same way, yeah. right? And so as you're coaching, knowing that, man, you have specific individuals that it just takes more time, right? Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. And it takes just different ways. Me, individually, personally, you want me to learn something, I need to know the big picture, right? I need to know where we're going, right? I need <laughs> yes, to know the why. Yes. Why are we doing this? Yep. Cool. What are we trying to accomplish? Well, and, But you need to know that if it's not instantly obvious to you. Yeah. Because we encountered Correct. this when we worked together. Yep. Yep. There are... Yeah, there are some, and, and I'm not afraid to ask that question, right? But no, this is not. also how I express and how I uh, how I coach because I this is the way I was. So my natural go-to is I want to tell you exactly why. So when I'm coaching and I have an underhook, you don't quite understand it, but if I'm talking about an underhook, why do I have this? What, am, what are the different avenues yes. for this? And knowing the whole aspect of it yes. because it's a defensive 
tool. It's an offensive tool. It's a way to move. It's a way to, to, to stall. It's a way, which are all wrestling terms. It's like yeah. all sports things, but yeah. like these are all different things you, you should know. And I can tell you just one specific way, but I want to do all encompassing. I'm never short on words, right? No, you're not. <laughs> Hence an hour and a half podcast that I would gladly be a Joe Rogan three hour podcast if I could, yeah. but it's just time. You know, and well, whatever. But that idea right there, why? The why. The why. It's and it's it's the understanding. Why? Why not? <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Why? Um, that's that's what I do with drumline as well. And so with with drumline, it's different because it's mostly a group instruction, and there's right. not a lot of time to really go one on one. And you, but you can, but it's in the context of the group still. But one of the big things is I constantly am asking questions because I want them to understand. And the more I learned and the, the, the better at, uh, as an instructor I think I get is because I start realizing, like, oh, this is why this is important. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we'll get done and we play with the Met, you know, the, the beep that you heard when we yep. watch the videos. And if you're not in with the Met, you're doing something wrong. Right. Because as drummers, like, you're expected to be perfectly in time, right? So, yeah. And so, well, they'll get off the Met. But there's there's reasons why you can get off. You can be playing too fast, you can be playing too slow. Mm-hmm. Like that amazing scene in Whiplash. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have I you seen the movie? Seen it, no. um, it's I great. told you it's a movie buff. Go ahead. I am. Um, and so you stopped the Met. I'm like, why did we stop? Because we're off, we're off the Met. Yeah. Okay. What were you doing? Were right. we too fast or too slow? And so they'll talk and then say, but okay. knowing and understanding which but one you are is like yep. a learning that's experience. Step, that's step one. Right. Okay. Are you too fast or too slow? Great. Now we know that. Okay. What do we do to fix it? Mm-hmm. Because that's what a lot of music is: is knowing your tendencies. And they, it's same with I assume with with coaching too. Know your tendencies and know how to adjust from them yep. when it comes up because you have to do it on the fly. Right. You don't get to just stop. Well, and that's your best music. athletes. Your yep. best athletes, and I'm sure it's your best your best musicians as mm-hmm. well can adjust on the fly, right? Where they can they can know that this is coming, right? Know that they're in a predicament where it's uh, maybe so for wrestling, for instance. Maybe it's you're in a match and a guy knows that you go to your underhook a lot and mm-hmm. he counters your underhook or he stays at distance and he stays away from you. Um, so now you have to adjust on the fly. How do I force the action to get to where I want to go? Mm-hmm. Can you adjust mid-match where, man, this position that I want to be in isn't natural? Mm-hmm. But it's the adjustment. And I think that that's what's the same with music. Exactly. It's just being able to, to recognize, oh, this guy's doing this, which is stopping me from doing this, but I still want to do this. I can trick him into doing it from here. For you, it's, oh, I'm too fast. I need to slow down. I need to listen right. to the tempo, but also follow the music that I'm going right. along. How do I do that? You guys, and yeah, knowing things. how to adjust. Mid- well, well, and like, so like the things will happen. It's like you're playing, we're playing fast, but you're not playing fast enough. Mm. Right. You're, and so this is just a perfect example because I think it really kind of lends to what you're talking about. And so you're slower than everyone else next to you. Okay. What do we do first? Okay, that's what I ask the students, and like I teach them, like okay, bring your stroke height down. Step okay, step by step. Yeah. So, you know, start start here. Okay, you're off just a little bit. Well, don't work so hard. Okay, let's bring the stroke height down, you know, six inches or so, and mm. then you're on. Like you, okay, so you're supposed to be playing like at a forte dynamic, which is like twelve inches. That's what you're sure. supposed to be playing. But that half a second that you're not hitting but is you're, causing you to be it's too slow. You to be slow. Okay, so, so bring it so closer let's bring to it down. the let's, drum. And, okay, so bring it down. Okay. And then play in time and then build up your strength. Sure. You know, your your finger hand muscles. Like let's build that up and then eventually we'll get up. It's better to play clean and like un- not loud enough. Right. Then loud enough. Quality and, over quantity. Exactly. And it's the same in, in wrestling. Yep. Quality over quantity. I would rather see you do five. I mean, I would like you to do drilling is a huge, right? And it's the right. same thing. That's what it's practice. Our, our warm ups It's are. a warm You're practicing technique. Right. And you might do the same drill over and over again, but it's, it's those. Not, it's close. It doesn't quite look uh, like that. Yeah. Can you do that for the camera? Yeah. <sighs> It's better than it's better than Trevor's fake drumming. Oh yeah, it's <laughs> sorry, I, sorry I, Trevor. 
<laughs> Trevor's going to be on next week, potentially. Sometime. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. That's great. He's uh, in South Carolina, I believe. North Carolina? South Carolina? South, South Carolina. Yep. South. He'll be back. He's in the family. This, uh, the end of the week, so. Yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah, so it's the same same concept of well, like, because you like just when want you're drilling, it's to... technique related, right? Right. So you're teaching the technique mm-hmm. when and how do you apply the technique. But people want to go so fast. So this is what you see in wrestling. Oh, yeah. People want to go full speed, right? <laughs> Which I want to go full speed too, but sometimes you got to yeah. slow down. Dude, just, I want you to focus on just getting your hands in the right place yeah. and you're going to get to this position and you know, you just slow it down. So you can go fast into this and we're going to work our speed up. So you're going to get into this position and then you can explode. Yeah. Right. But it's, we got, you've got to like, just get the quality <coughs> down, understand yeah. that you're in the right position before you can fully go into it's it. It's the exact same thing. And it becomes muscle memory. And I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's the same in drumline. And it, it is. And when you say like, everyone wants to go fast. Like I just immediately laugh because it's exactly right. What Everybody wants to go straight to what we just listened <laughs> exactly. to. Exactly. Right? Everyone wants to be playing as fast and as loud as they can. It's like, no. You, and yeah. we, I, we call it's it like, hacking. Like yeah. when you wake, if you, if you came to a drum line rehearsal and you just, um, and you just came like before it actually starts, yeah, it's chaos. Just everyone's doing whatever they want to do. And like, they're playing so big, but they're not playing with good technique. Like, you know, there's so, there's so many things I can get into talking about arms, hands, fingers, sure. know, stuff like that. And they're just, they're hacking Yep. and they're just playing super loud and it's terrible. And then we start and then oh, finally it gets into some precision. Yeah. And so I, I get on them. Quite but isn't that just starting out and being new and being young and like ex- I mean it's the same because I, oh, yeah. I walk into the wrestling room before practice yeah and generally there's at least two three four or five guys that are just like messing around and like wrestling it's, I, and it's totally fine and yeah nine times out of ten it's your guys that are like you're in your first or second year yeah that are like they're they enjoy it they are having fun oh, and they're trying and, to figure and it out nothing wrong with it I just but they're hacking I want to remind them yeah it's like, <laughs> you know? like please remember what I taught you <laughs> yeah yeah like just because you're having fun and messing around doesn't mean you need to to like do a different technique because it's in those moments that you're creating habits that translate exactly. to performance. And it takes a long time to break those it habits. It does. We all have them. I have them. Oh, I, I'm the first one to be like, tell my, to my wrestlers, like, I don't do this. I don't do this well when I wrestle. And this is why, like, this is how it affects, you know, mm-hmm. this position, yeah. right? Learn it now. Take the time. Go slow. You don't have to like go all like crazy right now you'll have a chance to do that when we wrestle live when we do our live performances when you have your like live practices where it's like getting ready for it you'll have those opportunities to Mm -hmm. let your skills shine but just right now just focus on the process well one of the things i tell my kids um is when they're when they're doing the hacking and stuff Mm -hmm. it's always it's always stuff they already know how to do like it's stuff that they learn it's yeah and so what i tell them is that you're you're never going to get any better if you don't do the things you can't do, if you don't practice the things that you're not good at and you yeah, can't do. Exactly. And but this thing, you're not good at it. But it's not. You it's don't fun. know how to do it. Yeah. It feels clunky and you're like, uh, right. Uh. But at the same time, so when I, when but you're you teaching don't get good at it, if you don't, you have to learn it and you have to do it slowly. You have yes. to take it step by step and you yeah. have to build it up. Yep. And that's why the, you, you'll get pushback. And that's why some people don't like it as much because, and this goes for anything. This goes anything. for teaching too. Yep. Uh, I had a student this it's last monotonous. year that really pushed back because on the academics that we tried to work with the student on, they really pushed back just because they didn't know how to do it. And mm-hmm. it's ex- and, and, and it's exhausting yeah. to learn how to do things that you don't know how to it do. Is. And, and that's it's not why, as fun. It's exactly. Just, until you know it. Exactly. And then it's fun. It's not it's fun. It's putting in the work. And all your best athletes, all your best musicians, all your best of the best of whatever industry in that anything. you're looking at yeah. are the ones that are have, they bite down on that bullet and they just go for it. And they yes. put in the work that needs to be put in and do the work that nobody sees, nobody knows, nobody hears it's, about, it's talks about. It's patience through the learning process. Mm-hmm. Those are the ones that I think you usually find to be the most successful. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. How has, um, I mean, cause we're, we're similar age. So we experienced mm-hmm. growing up in a world without internet or the internet that we have now, yeah. how has technology and just technology in general, I guess, changed the mu- music world in the sense of like, <laughs> man, you can go on YouTube right now and find a, a lesson on drumming, right? Yeah. Well, and there's pros there's... and cons to that, I'm sure. But 
like there's a lot of content. There's a lot of good content. And there's yeah, a lot of bad. Same content. for wrestling. There's no reason that you can't go home and excel faster than I'm willing to teach you. Yeah. Because you can go home, you can learn, you can hear, you can listen to, you can watch live matches, you can watch band competitions, you can watch drumline competitions. Yep. Um, well, that's that's that. the big benefit. Um, the benefit is access to to music in general. I mean, you remember what LimeWire? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Trying to download an album. Yeah. Uh, you know, the album. Spotify replaced that, but, and, and yeah. I know that Spotify gets a bad rap from musicians in some ways, but it at least, it, can, it, it at least allows you, yeah, it at least allows you to make some sort of money off of it. I know mm-hmm. that it's not, it doesn't, they don't treat their musicians it's, the best or It's better whatever, to, but, to get, make money off Spotify than have people just illegally get it. Right. You know. And I think that that's what that's allowed people to do. And I think over time, you know, everything's evolving and changing. So the yeah. model will change, I'm sure. They'll charge more. Something will happen and mm-hmm. whatever. But there'll be a new technology out there that replaces them at some point in time. And Oh, I'm sure there will be. You know, and so whatever. But I just, I just know, like, for wrestling in the sports world... Um, there's just zero, there's really zero excuses, and we push it even now. Like, mm-hmm. it's something I brought up of, you know, at the school that I coach at for next year, of being like, why not put out, one of the big things that we have is, like, if you miss a practice, you miss everything that we talked about that day. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I struggle with most is having people miss a practice, come back, we're trying to build on that. And now right. I have to go back and teach you from square one, which then takes me away from everybody else that's trying to learn the move that we're at th- yeah. that day. Yeah, attendance and issues, are, that, that happens everywhere. So, but, yeah. but using technology to combat that. And, hey, why don't we have, why don't we just create, you can create the, you're doing the exact same demonstration that you do for everybody yeah. that you're doing. Maybe you film it while you're in practice. Well, and, and you put yeah. it up for all of your athletes mm-hmm. to view. And, hey, this is the technique that we're working on this week. If you miss yeah. practice, you need to, to know this by the time you come in. Watch these that's videos. The, that's one of the biggest things is technology as a, as a tool. Tool. It's a, it's a tool to support the instruction, mm-hmm. teaching, coaching, however you want to look at it. Do you think it's helped in drumline? And definitely, the definitely. Um, I don't use it as much. Sure. Uh, we use the metronome. I'm, I'm a very hands-on person. Yep. And so in the world of drumming, it's, it's you're creating music already. So yeah. it's, it's, it's pretty... You know, we use the Met, uh, we have the music, I, you know, we use softwares to create everything that we use. Sure. But um, the uh, the guy I work with, if people are gone, he will record and okay. send videos. So, like, it still happens. Yeah. Um, but it's such a it's such a nice thing to do where, yeah. uh, you know, when I was growing up, I didn't have that option. No. We had, we had no options at all. I just I just spent more time in the room, which is well, pros and cons of that, too, you know? Yes. Like, I spent more time just, whether it was conditioning or whatever it was, like, I just... You put in your time and you put in your work. Well, I was learning, I was playing piano all through middle school, high school. It's so different than now. Mm -hmm. Um, If I wanted to learn something, I'd have to learn it pretty much by ear. And I'm very, I'm pretty good at it. I'm actually better, probably a better piano player than I am a a drummer, which a lot of people don't know because no one sees me do music pretty much ever. Yeah. Um, Play, you know, they know that we talk about and stuff. But yeah. um, But yeah, so you had to learn by ear. Versus now, you can just go on YouTube and you can, or on just on Google, you can find sheet music, or you can find uh, the popular thing now is like those scrolling videos, where it'll show you the keyboard and then it'll have the notes. Oh, you know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah. And so that'll teach you anyone just e- really easily how to play a song. Yeah, on the piano. cool. So, That's interesting. Yeah, yeah, very easy to use. Really cool. All right, all right. Now you're. I want to know about teaching. So yeah. how you got into teaching, kind of what led you that direction? The um, movie theater, actually. Movie theater. Yeah. So let's start there. I, I started working on a movie Full theater. Full circle, man. You, yeah. You got music, movies, movies and, and teaching. teaching. Those are like your trifecta of power that's, right there. That's just, that's just me in a nutshell. But yeah. yeah. But so, like they go hand in hand, which is really cool. Yeah. I used to, my first job in high school was at the movie, th- the local movie theater. Yeah. I started there in 2006. I remember. Told you he's a movie buff. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I absolutely, I love movies. <laughs> it's, I was going to say like almost ashamedly, but I'm not ashamed at all of my deep love for movies. The only time it becomes an issue though is like people are like, do you talk about anything else? I was like, yeah, we can talk about the twins. <laughs> 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 or we can talk about music. Like I, I used to get 
like nervous about that like where people like you don't talk you don't like talking about anything else i was yeah. like well it's just like anyone in their you. passion though yeah just it's like just talk about the things you care about and yeah. the, and you can i mean dude sports i love i love sports right mm-hmm. like i could talk about sports all, all day long it was really fun to talk to josh about 30 minutes of fantasy football and well that wasn't just fantasy football that was football period football period yeah. however like it just limits your audience, and some people just don't find that interesting. And I that's, get that; that's like that's fine. Just, uh, but I think you can relate to everything, right? right? Like, in, even talking about like sports and music, they're right. extracurriculars. There's similarities. It's yeah. the coaching piece, yep. the teaching. You're a teacher. I was an EA, mm-hmm. an education assistant. I, was, I, I did the EA part as well. Um, but yeah, so yeah, so I, I started working the movie theater in 2006, and to this day, I'm still technically employed there. Uh, and I might actually work some shifts over the summer. I'm getting a little stir crazy, to be yeah. honest with you. I'm getting a little. <laughs> what not, am I gonna do with yeah, the drumline. That's kind of calmed down until nice. August. Um, and so after the student teaching thing, where I kind of realized I didn't want to um, do that, I kind of dragged my feet and just kind of worked at the theater full time. And yeah. um, the school district that we work for has a program that sends sends their students to work at the movie theater. Right. Um, which you you well know about, but yep. and so it's great, and so they would come and and the person there would have me kind of work with them, yeah. And so finally, my my dad was really kind of um, really pushing me to get a, a job job, yeah. you know. He was because I was living at home, yep. And I was getting to the end of my one year free rent post college, yeah. And yeah, that's yeah. and that's how my parents did it, and I and I love them for it. I think it's great. Said you can live here for a yep. year for free, yep. And after that, we'll start charging you rent. Yep. It's not that we don't want you. It's so just figure it out. This is the, yeah. this is the, how the real world world works, and, and I, I do thank them for that. It's a good life lesson for sure. Definitely. Um, and so he was he was really pushing me to get a get a real job, and the person there was like, well, why don't you come work at the school that we both work at now? Um, and so I started working there as an EA. Um, for a few years and then talking with our program administrator when she learned that I had an, uh, an ed degree already yeah. she really pushed me she's like you can be a teacher yeah. like, you can do this like just you have a license all you have to do is get this do different sped, type of license special education direction yeah you know? so she's like get enrolled in a program and immediately like we have a ton of teachers especially now that have just started their first license in special ed. Yeah. And so it takes a little longer for them to get hired. But, but as for long me, as they're enrolled. In as long the... as they're enrolled, they're fine. But for me, I already have an ed license. And so that immediately puts me in a good spot. Right. And so I got the job and I finished my third year. And uh, yeah, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a trip. <laughs> yeah. It's an interesting job, but I actually, I do find a lot of joy in it mm-hmm. for a stressful and it's physical um, and challenging as it is, I find a lot of, of joy in it because it's something, there's certain things I'm very bad at with my job. Like I, I just, uh, things I'm like, uh, paper, I'm very bad with paperwork. I need to, I need to get a lot better with that. But yeah. there are aspects of the job that I know. Which unfortunately is a larger part of your job than anybody it's would ever about, want it to be. <laughs> yeah, it's probably about half, it's probably about half of it. Yeah. Uh, but there are parts of the job that I've learned that I'm, I'm very good at. Yeah, and so finding something you enjoy mm-hmm. that you're that you have talent in that doesn't take away from your passions and stuff. Absolutely, find that finding that balance was really it was really nice, and it yeah. just and it just happened to work out. Yeah, from working at the movie theater. I honestly, Eric, I so I started working in Eric's room. Um, when I first, so I was a sub, I worked mm-hmm. through, I Brent mentioned it. I did the same kind of path that Brent did, I guess. Yep. I worked in the special education world for a little while. I, I left the, the district that I was with before. It was just so far away. It was like 40, 45 minutes. And, yeah, it was a long time. um, you know, it was just like, especially I, in the twin cities. Area. Yeah. I was just like, I, I can't keep doing that anymore. And, mm-hmm. um, just some different things. But anyway, I was like, well, I'll just sub and I can, I can work the same in the same industry, you mm-hmm. know, I'm working in special education. I just sub from place to place and knowing the subbing world, it's very, uh, a needed area just in general. Yeah, like the definitely. people are, you're never, you're never really like lacking a job. I never had a day where I could wake up and be like, there's no place for me to go to. Yeah. If you, you know? wanted like, to work, if I wanted to work, work, I could work. Yeah. yeah. I could work t- every day of the week, you yep. know, uh, except for Saturday and Sunday cause schools aren't open. But, 
that's beyond the point. Exactly. Um, yeah, so I started out that same direction, but I, like, what, two weeks into the school year, yeah, I started subbing two. in uh, your classroom, mm-hmm. uh, 163, baby. Yep. And that was my, my entry, and I, I fell in love with your classroom. I fell in love with the school you district. Came, you came at a time where we, needed, already, we needed you. <laughs> I already had my, like, trainings. and uh, yeah, I remember when, you, when we found that out. Yeah. <laughs> Sly guy. Uh, <laughs> he conveniently, uh, conveniently didn't tell us that he was trained until randomly after, like, a month of working there. Yeah. So like we have, we, <laughs> our, our job is physical, like, like Eric had mentioned, and they haven't really mentioned too much about this, but, um, I have said that it's a level four setting, mm-hmm. um, which just means there's a highly higher likelihood of physical behaviors. Well, um, it, the, the federal settings, uh, it's all about the percentage of the day spent in or out of the general classroom. So okay. setting f- setting four is one hundred percent of the school day spent in a in a, um, a special ed program. Gotcha. And it could be on. It's usually off site. So that's yeah. what we are. So uh, setting three is like integrated a little bit more. Yeah, it, that's what setting I worked three, in before. Yeah, setting three could. I think it's like. 75 to 100 percent or something like that so you can still spend 100 percent of your day not in the general classroom but you could still be in like the special ed services housed by that high school right so the intermediate district that we work for the you know we have 15 17 member districts you know they send their kids to us yeah so it the the federal setting is all just based about the amount of time spent in the general class gotcha which is interesting um which makes sense i don't know if i've ever been explained the level four setting in that way it, it was never explained to me. I had to kind of like figure it out and then finally have a conversation where it was explained to me. I might be yeah. getting some of it wrong, but that's the way that I understand it. Yeah, which it does make sense because there are, you know, where we work, like there are definitely times when we're like, why is that kid here? Like, but mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Now that explains that process a little bit more. Right. Um, just because a lot of our students have the possibility or the likelihood or have the track record for being physically violent, being mm-hmm. um, aggressive towards right. staff, towards other students. Yeah, and, th- and those those are what we that we experience a lot of those. But um, oh, hey, bud, what's <laughs> up, Chance? Chance is moving around, um, and it's a new not spot. there. You go, and it's not necessarily all the kids. It's like some of those kids that we wonder, like, why do we have them? It's their school district didn't have like the things that they need you know, yeah. access to. Even people could be part of the services that they don't have access to. Right. Yeah, because we have access to social workers, to speech uh, oh, yeah. speech pathologists, to no shortage of, uh, uh, occupational therapists, to autism spectrum specialists, to, I mean, there's just a vari- wide variety of different people within our building that no. provide different services, and, like, look, which is are, awesome. It's, it's unique. It yeah, is, it very is, unique. You're... you're and I think our school, day. I think our district does a really great job. There, every district you can pick apart, right? But I think we do every a really job great. You can pick apart. Yeah. Every boss you can pick apart. Every coworker you can pick apart. Yep. But that, I that think that they change. do a really great job. And from my experience with working for a few different, you know, uh, districts and places, and from my subbing to different mm-hmm. jobs that I've had, I think that our school district did a really great job and does a really great job um, in doing what it does. Uh. Yeah, but it's just interesting. So uh, the, how we got on this track was I was just saying like so PCM, which stands for Professional Crisis Management. Professional Crisis Management is our I am an instructor. It is our yeah. Eric is an instructor. It is our uh, hold. So if a student is to get physically aggressive or continuously be aggressive towards staff, mm-hmm. students, their surroundings, self injurious behavior. So on and so forth. There's a wide variety of reasons of why it's needed. Yeah. yeah. Um, We are trained to become Mm hands-on, which is just our legal boundaries and, like, framework for how we can protect them, how we can protect our staff, and how we can protect our students. Yep. Basically. Yep. Um, And so I was trained because I worked for a different school district beforehand. I was still within my, like, allotment. But as a sub, you just, like, you don't come into a school and be like, hey, I'm PCM trained. Well, and and you you were the first sub, I think, that we had ever encountered that happened to have been trained. Right. And so when that happens, you're, you were already uniquely qualified to work in my room at the, especially at that time. Yeah. Um, yeah. and that, that made you even more uniquely qualified and needed at, at that point, ways, really yeah. needed, um, to help out in some ways in that classroom. And so it's just, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, we were so mad at you. <laughs> we found that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I had waited like two weeks before I really brought it up. And so I was like yeah. two weeks in, and uh, I finally had kind of like slipped, let that one slip. But it worked out. It was great. And, and I ended yep. up, you know, just applying. You have to do mm-hmm. put in a certain amount of hours and yep. end up getting and was hired on. I've been there for a year and a half. Um, oh, yeah, officially. Yeah, officially, but I've been there for it's a couple like years now. Years. Yeah, because yeah. pretty much that entire school year and this last entire school year and yeah. uh, several years prior to that. So it's been kind of my industry in the yeah. last several years. Um, with that said, there are some changes coming down the pipeline for, for me and my family, mm-hmm. um, and which is going to require me to put in my resignation. Yeah. And I thought it would be appropriate. I already drafted up the email, but mm-hmm. I thought it would be appropriate for me to just go ahead and hit send on this in- email <laughs> while sitting with the person that I first came into uh, Intermediate School District 916 with. Um, and so here we are. I'm just going to go ahead and send this yeah. send this off. So I'm I don't officially... Think it's, yeah, I don't think it's anything that they're not... They're ready for or, yeah, yeah they, they, um but i i haven't i haven't spoken to them and i haven't done this uh, honestly it's been a, a process um and just yeah. things have finally there you go finally happened so there it is i have officially resigned from my That's, that is a bummer position uh with the school district and this is why when you've heard me uh, bring different people on like Josh and myself was saying like currently work for <laughs> because I've I've known this is coming uh, you know there's some changes that are coming down the line and just kind of finalized about a mm-hmm. week and a half ago and so um, how am I going to get back on the podcast when, you, when you're down there hey I do well you're going to have to come to come to where I'm living just to be on the podcast to be on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> I mean I think that you know that's fair because I want to see your face that's so true. you need to that's come fair. down However, I do have the opportunity to, uh, the ability to do things over the phone. And, um, I did that with Todd Waddington and, and we can, we can oh, make yeah, that yeah. happen. So this yeah. hopefully won't be the last time you're on the podcast for sure. I would definitely hope not, but yeah, we got into the education world a little bit. Um, didn't talk too much about movies. No, That's but I want to know, can you spout off your top three movies? I thought you were going to be asking this. Um, I suppose I can. I don't. I usually don't have like a list because it's. That's fine. You can you can name. I mean, but yeah. up to top ten, right? So if you've got yeah. ten movies, you can be like, these are in my top oh, ten. Pretty much anything by Christopher Nolan is a is a win for me. Uh, Examples. Th- my my number one movie is probably The Prestige. The Prestige. Okay. Have, have you seen that one? I have seen it. It is utterly fantastic. You learn something new every single time you watch the movie like some little detail yeah i need to watch it again though and it's christopher been a long nolan time. is the uh, story of my life is i watch movies and i'm like uh yeah. i don't remember it but i you watched got, it well and that one <laughs> when you get to the end of the movie it really requires you to pay attention i okay. love movies where you don't have all the information until the end mm. he, but and like christopher nolan all his, he's obsessed with time and so yeah. like he all of his movies have some relation of time in, okay except for maybe the batman movies but even then um and so he also says everything you need to know about my movies is in there. And so when you watch The Prestige, you you know the ending and you go back and watch you like wow, like that really was there, like that was there, that was there, that was there. So I I love that movie. I can watch yeah. that every every month. So um, Prestige definitely up there. I love uh, David Fincher movies, but my favorite is not one most people think. I think his best movie is Zodiac. Zodiac. I so find Prestige, it, Zodiac. Yeah, I Zodiac okay. is so fascinating because the Zodiac killer stuff is, I think, yes, is fascinating. Yeah, I to watch with. this one. So, um, and the movie is about the guys that were trying to capture him, and the guys are trying to capture him were so obsessed with what was going on, and you as the v- the viewer become as obsessed as the characters in the movie. So it's, it's really interesting experience watching the movie because the movie ends and the first thing you do is you go on Google and you start searching, did they actually never find the Zodiac Killer? Like, that's how good the movie is. Um, that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. And then, keep going. Um, I usually I usually say The Usual Suspects. I love that movie. Oh, that's a, that's the movie? Yeah. The Usual Subsus- Suspects? You've ever seen it? No, I have no <gasps> idea. It. Who's, it's good. Who's in it? Um, Kevin Spacey. Okay. Which I was I was going to ask you about that. Uh, Kevin Spacey, Benicio del Toro, uh, Stephen Baldwin. Here's your chance. What are you going to ask me? Well, 
So, because I figured you were going to ask me about my favorite movies, and yeah. Usual Suspects and LA Confidential are usually at the top of my list. Okay. And when the Kevin Spacey stuff came out, mm-hmm. my brother, my twin brother, who's a brilliant guy, he sent me an article because he knew that a couple of my favorite movies of all time were Kevin Spacey movies. Okay. And he's in them. And so I was reading the list. It's like, can you appreciate the art of someone that most people consider to be a monster? Like, can you separate those two? Like based on what he did I was like well I don't know if those can be my favorite movies anymore Ooh. because of who he is as a person it was a fascinating article and I wish I had access to I tell it. you what we are at 89 minutes yeah. and 16 seconds and counting yeah so we will have to save that thought for the next podcast yeah so the next time you're on you gotta remember that one you gotta ask me that question I will and then our listeners can be ready for it sure guys we gotta end things now I am so grateful to have you on the podcast, man. I I really appreciate it. I love all the things that make you who you are. Thank Um, you, man. Music, teaching, it's been an honor to to get to know you and to call you a friend. Um, I'm I'm excited. So, Thank you so much, Eric. Appreciate it. Love you, man. Love you too. Thanks, bud. And we'll see you next time. All right. All right. See you later. Bye.